Luckily, I have an opportunity to learn from this master. It's very small size. The way he walks becomes a rhythm. It's the coordination with his hand, with his foot. The world has a language that is almost gone. It's called the Sui Gang language. Once they filled the needs of many with their handmade products. Using techniques passed down generations, they enjoyed a time-honored trade. Changing times and mass production, however, drive artisans to the edge of extinction. Who can give them a glimmer of hope? A group of New Age novices think they can as they spin new into old in Artisan's Reboot. Dating back to the Stone Age, one of mankind's earliest crafts was an object to contain nature. How best to hold water before it is guzzled by the ground? The answer came from the ground itself. From small to large, earthen pots were traditionally hand-built. Even with today's mechanism, hand-built pots have a certain edge over machine-made ones. Soya sauce artisans would be the first to vouch for that. In a world of pre-plastics, pot makers performed a critical function. Without their products, our liquids could not be contained. Nowadays, pot makers aim for form over function. With modern techniques, ceramic artists like Chu Xiaopeng use the medium for artistic creativity. He knows little about the ancient techniques of hand-building giant pots. This is very interesting. I've seen that before, but I never tried it before. Mr. Chu is Singapore-based and about to take a journey back to the past. His mission? To learn the ancient technique of building big pots and to preserve the craft for future generations. He travels to Taiwan on a mood one can summarize as confident. It look easy. After all, I'm in this line, I have done hand building before, I have done throwing before. It could not be too difficult for me. With a background in pot building, our ceramic artist gives himself a week to master the art that lies within the jaws of the snake. The snake kiln is home to one of the world's remaining keepers of ancient knowledge. With barely a week to spare, will Mr. Chu be able to grasp that knowledge? Will the kiln masters allow him access to the master? <laughs> Kilns in Taiwan employ potters to create and to teach. But Mr. Chu wasn't after the simple pots. He wants more. Fearing a misunderstanding, he clarifies. The snake kiln is home to Master Jiang, 80 years old and one of the last remaining builders of giant water urns. Each urn is hand-built 
And amazingly, each piece ends up with the same precise dimension. This skill took Master Jiang more than 50 years to perfect. Mr. Chu wants to accomplish that in less than a week. Simba, huh? Hey, Chu, say, you want me to come in? Oh, so I'm going. Oh, hold on. Master Zhang started learning through observation. No touching was allowed. Mr. Chu, however, is in luck. Master Zhang believes in interactive teaching. The objective of this tapping is to thin and even out the walls. The tools are unique, made of wood and ceramic, created by the master himself. Uncertainty starts to creep in. One wrong move and the pot will collapse. And so round and round, lightly beating, Mr. Chu begins his big urn adventure. The pot, though, built up is flimsy, too much fiddling, and the clay might stress and collapse. The ceramic artist realizes that hand building has a certain logic. It requires rhythm and direction. Easy now begins to look very difficult. <laughs> Luckily, Master Zhang is a creature of strict routines. Halfway through the lesson, it's break time. With only one week, our ceramic artist hopes to master hand-built water urns. His first lesson sends him into dizzying depths. <laughs> By afternoon, master and novice get down to basics. An earthen pot is made of clay and water. One of the most important preparatory steps is to remove air pockets through kneading, or in pottery speak, wedging. Every potter or ceramic artist knows this. There are many methods of wedging, but cone wedging works well for huge quantities of clay. Again, techniques modern and ancient clash. This uh, wedging method is a bit different from mine. He's doing the right side, I'm doing the left side. So he was saying that uh, I do it the wrong way. So I explain to him I'm doing the, the left side <laughs> with the left hand. Unlike thrown pots where a lump of clay is worked from inside out, hand-built pots start with a base, upon which coils are layered. Get the base wrong, and everything goes wrong. Building is painfully slow, but the potter has greater control over the shape and size of the pot. That, of course, is assuming the potter has great control over his own force. The movement is one up, one down. The left, you got to push out and using the thumb to press down, and your right got to twist the other way, opposite direction so as to squeeze the plate in an even manner. 
You got to move very slow in order to make it very round. If you move a bit too fast or too far out, uh, the pot definitely go out of shape. We are moving round the pot, so we have to walk backward, forward, make it a bit dizzy, you know. Like sometimes you, you lost your direction, don't know which way to move, is it? It may not look much, but this is a physically demanding job. <laughs> Master Zhang can sympathize. He's had a similar training many decades ago, when he was just a young urn. He became and still is an employee of the kiln. Master Zhang is today one of the last few masters of water urns. His latest student is beginning to understand why the old trade has reached to the end of the line. They use a very thick coin. Normally what we do is very thin coin. So all the hand movement, the coordination is like something new to me. By day's end, the new apprentice is left with serious concerns. Okay. Master Chiang is uh, very patient and uh, Actually, he is really he has his way of doing, and uh, all, all in fact, I think it's a shortcut is the, the way he do because certain certain uh, step he he don't need to do it. It's already when he do the base, it's already perfect round, so no, no need to push out a bit. So as I start doing certain part might be not round, I gonna push out. The snake kiln has been around for nearly a hundred years, run by the same family, like a snake. The kiln burrows through 30 meters of land with pottery all totally wood fired. The kiln is today a major tourist attraction with its main draw, a six meter pottery bottle built by Jiang and another master. Mr. Lim owns the kiln and is himself a big urn builder. Surrounded by two of the greats, our novice asks for extra tuition. You get giddy in a way as you move around too much. Is it? It's not sick. Uh, within one or two days, you can master the kind of thing. You need, I think, maybe years at least. You will tend to move too fast. It's very slow, actually. You really need to practice quite a lot before you can really master the step. One of the reasons why learning takes so long is the master-apprentice relationship. Secret skills are passed down only when there is trust. Trust takes time and biting by the master's lifestyle. 
Over the next few days, our ceramic artist finds himself living out the master's routine, from drinks at dusk to dusk at dawn. He actually likes this environment very much. Every morning he'll come, he'll chipping the floor, cleaning out the place. You know, it's very good and actually healthy for him. Like all trades, skill comes from practice. With only a few more days to go, our ceramic artist finds himself living the rhythm of hand-built pots. Only one day to go before his return to Singapore. Far from ready, he has thrown a challenge. Our ceramic artist finds himself in the jaws of the snake. To get out with reputation intact, he must complete the task his master set him. Getting a bit stressed now because you want me to do the kind of height, so I will try, try my best to achieve the kind of height you want. Very important in this technique is the whole step. He actually move backward and move round the pot. It's a rhythm. You move about three inch to five inch apart. To me, it's like a kind of dance. And if you wear shoe, you tend sometimes to move out of the circle. So it affects the shape of the pot. An overworked clay wall could easily collapse. Halfway through the dance of pot, Master Jiang makes a surprise inspection. I don't think I can make it to two feet. Lah. I don't have the confidence that it might stay on, it might collapse. Morning until now is a bit too tired. Lah. Uh, concentration is getting bad. Is it? One week after his apprenticeship, Mr. Chu is back to the point where he started, thinning and smoothing out the pot. I'm uh, using these tools to form the shape. This is a quite a uh, heavy uh, piece of tools. And uh, with this wooden mod, you gotta coordinate. The, the action gotta be together in order to form the right shape and round shape. So a bit stressed, lah. not used to uh, this kind of uh, tools. At stake is an important part of pot building, making a rim. If his pot is not up to scratch, the master might not teach him that finishing touch. The rim, that's very important. It looks to be a slightly different technique. It's thicker, so it's good to learn to complete the, the whole process from beginning on the base to the top. I do not know what he will say, whether it's good or bad. On cue, the master makes an appearance. The news was not unexpected. With no more time on his hands, our novice asks for closure. Dejected, Mr. Chu was not expecting the next bit of news. Oh, 
ออันนี้ก่อนครับอ As the end draws to a close, Master Zhang gives him a word of advice. นี่ทำไปตีสิงคโปร์ตีแล้วก็เด่นเด่นสิบเด่นสิบคนเจ็ดคิวเจ็ดอันเจ็ดเจ็ดเจ็ดเจ็ดสิบเอ็ง It's a very sad to to leave uh, after spending with Master Zhang for for these couples of days and. Uh, Learning from him and, and uh, listen to his commands and actually I, I learned something uh, Hopefully I'll, I'll be back again uh, soon. As the kiln fires once a year, Mr. Chu will not get to see a finished pot, but he and his master have traced their names for a future. In recent years, artisanal crafts have been a focus of interior design. The snake kiln recently received an order for Master Zhang's urns. They'll be centrally placed as upmarket bathtubs. But the bad news is what happens when the old masters are gone. Will hand building techniques disappear? Today, you'll be learning. Uh, Back in Singapore, Chu's plans go into motion. He's creating a new generation of hand builders. So you can actually see inside. Oh, you want to see it? Yes. So we're talking big. Yes. He plans to master the technique and apply that to modern ceramics. And he hopes to teach that to his students, who will bring that skill to the far-flung corners of the world. Students, when they go back to their country, they might pass on. You know, it will spread all over the world. So we are interested to have a trip to Taiwan. Yeah. yeah. And his apprenticeship has not ended. There will be plenty of return trips to Taiwan to continue with his master. The techniques of hand-built arms has found a new twist for the future.